bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, may the Lord bless you as you watch. May the Lord enlarge your territory as you watch. We are continuing on our teachings concerning exposing, exposing our false prophets and uh, Satanism. Um, we thank God for the revelation that he continues to show us so that it can, it can help you. Um, today, I'm going to look at um, one major system that they use, uh, these false prophets. There is one major system. There are a lot of systems that they use, but today we are going to look at one major system that they use uh, to make sure that uh, they, they deceive people, to make sure that they attract many people. And remember, these false prophets, their intention is to benefit themselves, is for their own gain. Um, having said that, they develop a lot of systems that allow them to deceive people and uh, to uh, put people in a position where people think that they are men of God. So I just want to do a short recap uh, on yesterday's service, on a teaching that, uh, that I gave you, so that we just make sure we're on the same page. Um, I, I feel in my spirit that uh, concerning yesterday's service, I need to broaden it so that we get deeper in it as the Lord helps you. Remember, yesterday we were uh, speaking about uh, how important it is that you don't get deceived um, by these uh, false prophetic movements. Um, we, we, we said, yesterday I said, um, Jesus said that in the last days, false prophets will arise. But prophets are not the only office that is in the body of Christ. For the Bible says Jesus is given a fivefold ministry. He gave some to be apostles. He gave some to be uh, prophets. He gave some to be pastors. He gave some to be teachers and some to be evangelists. So that's the fivefold ministry. But now, if Jesus says in the last days many false prophets will arise, it means the attack concerning a false movement of the gospel is going to be mainly in prophetic churches. So it means you need to be very uh, careful when it comes to uh, uh, prophetic churches. My church is a prophetic church. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying this so that you understand that I'm not sitting here criticizing this because uh, I don't believe in uh, prophets. I'm not criticizing it because I don't believe in pastors, bishops, evangelists. No, um, I, I do believe uh, my father in the Lord is a prophet. I myself am a, am a prophet. Uh, but like I said, uh, even though I've instructed those who uh, follow me and believe in our ministry to stop calling me by that title because uh, that title is uh, now an embarrassment. That title can, now carries a lot of shame. And I am not going to risk the Church of Jesus Christ because of uh, titles that people give us. So uh, feel free to call me uh, your brother. Feel free to call me uh, hey, Bagasa. Feel free to call me uh, Mr. Bagasa. Feel free to, feel, feel to call me Pastor. Um, it's not about the title. Um, ministry is not about title. Ministry is about function. So, like I said, um, the attack is going to be mainly on the prophetic ministry. It doesn't mean that there won't be false apostles. It doesn't mean there won't be false uh, uh, pastors. It doesn't mean there won't be false evangelists. It doesn't mean they are going to be. They are not going to be false teachers. They are going. There are also going to be attacks concerning the other uh, four offices uh, of the fivefold ministry. But the main attacks are going to come through people who hold the titles prophets or prophetesses. So now. How, how then do you get into a church and you deliver yourself from such men of God or such women of God who are deceiving people for personal benefit, who are deceiving people just to enrich themselves? They have no motive to uh, uh, spread the gospel or make the kingdom of God grow. Their intention is to lie as if they are men of God but is to uh, focus on personal agenda of enriching themselves how then do you get into a church like that and you deceive you, you deliver yourself so that you avoid yourself uh, from getting deceived uh, yesterday I told you that um, we have got a f nine fruits of the spirit we have got nine fruits of the uh, spirit 
if you uh, go to the book of uh, Galatians 5 verse 22, you are going to realize that uh, the Bible says, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So these are the nine fruits of the, of the Spirit. But if you go to 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8, it says, um, for to one is given a word of wisdom. So wisdom is a gift of the Spirit to another. Word of knowledge, so word of knowledge is a gift of the Spirit. Uh, to another, faith, so faith is a gift of the Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, um, speaking in tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. So these are the nine gifts of what? Of the spirit now I was explaining to you that it's uh, important for you to have all the nine fruits of the spirit love joy patience kindness goodness long-suffering gentleness faithfulness it's important that you have all the nine you can't choose to say I only want to walk in love but I don't want to uh, walk in patience or I only want to walk in uh, uh, patience or long-suffering but I don't want to walk in kindness you don't have that choice when it comes to the fruit of the spirit but when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, you can choose whether you want one gift, two gifts, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you want nine of them, God will give them to you. But what purifies your gift is the fruits of the Spirit. One can then not prophesy and they are not faithful. One can then not move in deliverance and they are not good. One cannot... Uh, uh, I have a gift of discerning spirits and they are so powerful in it or a gift of dreams and whatever the dream happens but they are a wife beater they are not a gentle person you can't do that because what perfects the gift that God has given you is the fruit as a man or a woman of God you begin to uh, uh, or rather what you use to judge whether the gift that you have is still coming from God or whether the source is still God is by the fruits of the Spirit. When you are not walking in the fruits of the Spirit and you still can prophesy, I mentioned it yesterday, it means the source of that gift is now the devil. Remember the devil also give gifts to his own. Jesus told us that in the last days false prophets will come. They are going to do mighty miracles. They will command fire from heaven and fire will come down. So, never should miracles, prophecy, healing, deliverance, uh, all these fruits of the Spirit, I mean the gifts of the Spirit, hear me well, um, pardon me, never should healing for the sick, deliverance, prophecy, never should the gifts in the Spirit be used by you to say this is a man of God. Because the devil can give these gifts to his own people. The gifts, the gifts that the devil cannot give, are the fruits of the spirit which are love because god is love which are patience patience is a is a gift of god which are kindness goodness to mention but just a few so i'm uh reiterating this to you so that even as a worker of the gospel you also continuously do a check and balance to see whether your gift is still coming from the holy spirit or you are now just a man just moving with a gift but the source is no longer god how do you see that if you are dreaming things and things are happening your dreams are coming from God by moving in the nine fruits of the Spirit. So yesterday we looked uh, at a very important gift that we are going to look at again today, which is the gift of discerning spirits. The gift of discerning spirits is not called the gift of discernment. Gift of discernment, discernment means separ separation. So if you say you've got a gift of, se of separation, it means you've got a, a gift of, uh, say, separating people, you've got a gift of destruction. That's what it means. So this gift is not called a gift of discernment. It's called a gift of discerning spirits. A gift of discerning spirits. Why is this gift so important in our modern day Christianity? Because of these false men of God and their systems and the spirits that they are using that are motivating whatever they are doing in their churches. I want to put it to you that Jesus said they are going to arise from among you. So don't look from outside the church to look where false prophets are. False prophets are people who used to walk with God. 
But they started struggling in the fruit of the Spirit, like patience, waiting for God's time, for God to bless them and lift them up. And uh, at one point, they probably realized they are prophesying and moving so powerful into the gifts of the Spirit. But they are not understanding why they are struggling, probably financially, in the ministry. So they begin to look for other sources of money, which are sources of the devil. And by doing so, they still possess the gift. But because they lack the fruit, which is patience in terms of waiting for God, or goodness in terms of uh, using the gift of God uh, uh, as it comes from God, they lack all that. They lack the fruit of the Spirit. It then puts such a man or a woman in a position where they are no longer a true man of God or a true woman of God or a, a, a true prophet. They become a false prophet by virtue of the source of where uh, they are getting the gift. And like I said from the beginning, you see the source from where your gift is coming from by the fruit of the Spirit. So you have got an assignment every day. You have got an assignment every, 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 every minute. You have got an assignment every week, every month, every year, as a child of God, to check your love walk, to check your patience, your, your, your gentleness, goodness, the nine fruits of the Spirit. These are the checks and balances that God has given us. That is, we are operating in the gifts. We check by the, by the fruits. As we operate in the gifts, we check by the fruits that our gifts are still coming from, from God. So let's look at the gift of descending uh, spirits or the gift of separating spirits. When someone possesses a gift of separating spirits or of descending spirits, when they get into a place where there are angels, they will tell you that this place has got angels. Every other person in that place might not see that there are angels in this place, but a person who has got a gift of descending spirits will tell you they have got their angels in this place. A person who has got a gift of descending spirits when they get into a place where everyone else probably is feeling that there is God in this place, they will tell you, of course you are feeling God, but I'm descending that there are demons in this place and we need to pray about this. So normally, it's important to put people that have got gift of descending spirits in departments like intercession because they are the ones that have got the ability to pick before services start whether the service is being attacked by demons and what kinds of demons. There are people who are so gifted in these things, uh, gifts of descending spirits. And um, it operates in so many ways. When I say in so many ways, I'm talking uh, about uh, how you can uh, depict and uh, see that you've got this gift. Some people can uh, actually feel, have senses, certain senses in their eyes. Some who have sen certain senses in their ears. Some who have certain senses on their tongue. Some who have certain senses in their stomach. A right hand, left hand, right leg, it just depends. Some will just open up their mouth and begin to utter spirits that are in that place using this gift but without any senses they are feeling in the body. As they are speaking, it's, the words are inspired by the Holy Spirit but they are actually telling the truth. Um, I remember there is a pastor that um, uh, used to mentor me in the past uh, before God separated me to start uh, this ministry. Uh, this pastor would come to church and if there's a sick person in the church, you would feel pain exactly where the sick person in the church is feeling the pain. So when he comes and he takes the microphone and he says there's someone who has got pain at the right hand uh, on your lower chest, a, a woman will stand up and say, yes, it's me and be prayed for. And they get their healing. So it shows you this person had ability to discern. He was very sensitive in the what? In the spirit. In the spirit. I remember before... Um, uh, we know we were so mature in the spirit. There's a time that we were uh, going for prayers, and uh, a certain man of God just came and uh, said, uh, "You guys have been praying, but uh, you need to push harder because I'm still sensing demons in this mountain. We were praying in a mountain, so he told us that we need to push harder uh, concerning our prayer because he was sensing demons in that mountain. We did not understand it, but as we continued to pray, uh, he started missionary deliverance." To one of the people we were with and this person started manifesting demons that were in that place and that's when we <laughs> realized and actually believed that uh, he was telling the truth then um, I, I remember the other time uh, I, I was uh, in a conference uh, in harvest I was international and uh, mama is I just walked into the service and before she preached she just said uh, there are demons that are in this place uh, and yet this was after a massive uh, period of worship 
but she just entered and said, I'm not going to preach until we cast out every demon that is in this place. The demons that came to what? To disturb. And we were shocked when she held the microphone and she started declaring and demons started manifesting. Then I remember the other time, uh, something interesting as well happened. Uh, a man of God just walked into the service and appointed a certain man and said, you, uh, they are, they are, you came to disturb our church. There are demons that are following you. And this man didn't even know uh, that he was being followed by demons. And uh, he was prayed for, demons manifested. So I'm just giving a lot of examples of how the uh, gift of uh, discerning spirits uh, operates. Um, so it's very, very important if you hear the examples that I've given you. It's very, very important for you to have this gift. Because with the uh, uh, way that men and women are so greedy in this era, that men are just starting churches uh, for the sake of making money. They don't care uh, whether you are healed or you are delivered. They don't care whether your soul goes to, to heaven at the end of your life. They are just after uh, making, uh, taking your money. It's, it then becomes very important for you to have this gift at a maximum level so that you are able to descend. Because, like I said, uh, these four false prophets are now so powerful that they can deceive people spiritually and physically for people to think that is a man of God by the way they dress, by the way they talk, by the way they quote scripture, by the way they uh, uh, memorize scripture, by their eloquence, their arrangement of words, which is important. All that, memorizing scripture, which is important, quoting it, which is important, uh, 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 dressing excellently, which is important. But which is not the foundation of the gospel. Jesus says, if you love me, you will do my word. He didn't say you memorize it or you quote it or you what. The, 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 the reality of a Christian or the identity of a Christian is not in quoting scripture, which is important. It's not in memorizing of scripture, uh, just committing it to your mind, which is important. It's in doing the word of God. So these men of God are eloquent. They quote scripture. But you can be deceived by their quoting scripture and you think they are men of God. Now, you need something that is beyond you just hearing them quoting scripture for you to believe that they are men of God. You need to have a gift of discerning spirits. You need to have ability to get into prayer and the Lord sends his angels to come and warn you not to go to that man of God or that woman of God. I remember one day I was speaking to one of my um, mentors and he was telling me that if you pray today and you ask God whether I'm a man of God or not, if you pray and ask God with all sincerity, with all honesty and with desire to want to understand god will reveal it to you so that's the problem people are just going to churches because they are hearing that there are miracles people are just going to churches because they are hearing that there's prophecy there's deliverance no one really goes for 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 the word of god no one really goes to grow in the word of god this is why the prophetic movement has grown so i want to I read second thessalonians 2 verse 7 to 12 to you uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7 to 12, to 12 to you, so that we get deeper. Remember, I'm talking about the ability to discern, such that when you get into a church, and there is a man of God who looks like they are a man of God, you then know through the ability to discern, not just follow and get lost, and not just follow because multitudes, that's where they are going, not just follow because that's where your brother or your sister is going. You need to develop a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he advises you, and you know what is happening in this world. We are in the end days. People are getting lost. People are getting deceived. And I'm going to prove to you through scripture so that you understand what I'm talking about and you hear what I'm talking about. Listen to 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7 to 12. It says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Not will be at work. So we are now in, 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 in a season where lawlessness is at work. What does lawlessness in this regard mean? It means men and women of God who are starting churches no, are no longer governed by the laws of God. They no longer care about what God says. They no longer care about what heaven says when it comes to uh, 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 the, the uh, character and the personality that a man of God should have. They don't care about uh, uh, truly getting born again so that they possess the right attributes of becoming a man of God. People are just becoming men of God and the, the, the mystery of lawlessness. So it is not just lawlessness, it's a mystery. A mystery means it's something that cannot be understood by just uh, looking with your eyes. A mystery means it's not something that you can just understand by hearing with your ears. And which is what has been happening. I've been talking to a lot of brethren since I started this um, uh, movement of uh, uh, exposing false prophets and Satanism. I've been talking to certain people, some who agree with me, some who don't agree with me, which is perfectly normal because uh, 
uh, people see things in a different way. But uh, it was a bit interesting when I was uh, talking to someone who did not agree with me and they were saying, uh, but uh, why don't you walk in love? Uh, is this not the time that we are supposed to stand together as a man of God with another man of God uh, who has done this? And I said, oh, what do you mean standing together with a man of God? We stand together with men of God, not with people who are not men of God. This, 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 these people that are doing things are not men of God. If they were men of God, you would find them coming and apologizing and say, look, what I did uh, that period or that thing that I did, I'm very sorry. Or you find them by changing uh, the way that they do things and that uh, they repent and we stand by them. They are deliberately cooking miracles in their churches. They are deliberately cooking prophecies in their churches to deceive people. So what are you talking about if you say, why don't we uh, 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 join hands with them? Is this not where the Bible say what does darkness have to do with light? Are we not as ministers of God supposed to show people the truth? Because these people are being taken to hell. People are, are perishing in their churches. And uh, we can't just stand and watch. My opinion, my opinion, I stand corrected. That's why I said, look, you, you have to uh, post and uh, respond to my message so that I also hear your opinion and we ask God and hear God's opinion. But my opinion is, uh, uh, when, when someone says uh, you are judging another person, judging is judging when you go and uh, uh, condemn someone with the heart of not wanting them to do right. But when you go and uh, tell someone they are wrong with the desire that they change, you are trying to point uh, the error that they made so that they change. It's not judging. So number one, you judge a person. You, when you are going to correct someone who has honestly made a mistake and you want them to change, you are not judging them. But if you go and you, are, uh, 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 you begin to condemn them when they have genuinely made a mistake, then that is judging. The Bible says, if one of you falls, let the elders of the church go to correct him or let them send someone who is strong in the spirit to go and help that person to be brought back to the, to, 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 to the, to the things of God. But don't send someone who is weak, otherwise they are going to fall also. And instead of losing one person from the body of Christ, we lose two. So there is actually a, a God's opinion concerning people who have fallen. You go to them and you, you, you uh, rebuke them and you help them and you correct them and they rise up again. But what if a person, what does the Bible say concerning a person who is deliberately going against God? Deliberately. I'm not talking about someone who is just making a mistake. Deliberately going against God for their own benefit. Does not the Bible say uh, 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 give their flesh to, to the devil so that on judgment day their souls can be saved? I will come with that another day. But I want you to understand my position. My position is to say to you and uh, to everyone who is listening to the world, we have got errors that are happening in the body of Christ. And we can't keep quiet in the name of uh, people say we are judging or in the name of people saying we are walking in love. Love is not uh, uh, people's mere feelings. Love is not people's mere uh, judgments. Love is not people's mere assumptions. Love is the word of God, for God and his word are one. So when we begin to preach the word of God, there is no love greater than God. There's no love. God is love. So there's no love greater than God. So love is God's word. So when we begin to preach the word of God and we show people the truth, that's what walking in love is, not what people assume that walking in love is this. Now, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So take note of that. The mystery is already at work. It's not going to come. It's already there. You are now a part of it. It's either you are being victimized by this mystery or you are doing something to change the mystery of lawlessness to make sure that people don't get negatively affected with it. Only he who, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Only he who now restrains will do so. Only he, and the he there has got a capital letter H. Only he with a capital letter H who restrains, who do so until he, with a capital letter H, taken out of the way, to show you it's speaking of uh, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is uh, putting his hand, as if to say, let not this movement uh, uh, cause a devastating impact right now. Because the Bible here is saying only he who restrains. So the Holy Spirit is a restrainer. He is, he is, he is standing in the way to stop uh, 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 too much damage happening in the hands of false prophetic movements and false prophets, false pastors. So here the Bible is calling the Holy Spirit the Restrainer, which is his other name. So he's standing in the way. Right now, we are in a dispensation where there is lawlessness. But the Holy Spirit is restraining. He is just uh, putting his hands to say uh, to the devil, 
you can't take over the world right now. But the, the Bible is telling us that until he's taken out of the way. So coming are years where the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of the way and the devil is going to have his way through prophetic movements that are wrong, through false prophets that are wrong. So people need to know this. People need to be taught this so that they are prepared and so that they, are, don't, they don't become victims of circumstances that are ahead of us. So what am I saying? I'm saying to you, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there right now to restrain. The Holy Spirit is there right now to restrain. He is the one who is blocking uh, the, 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 the movement of these false prophetic movements. He is the one who is blocking the devil from moving with so much force and power the way that the devil wants to move. But here we are being told that coming are the days when the Holy Spirit is going to be removed or is going to be taken away. Now you tell me what is going to happen when the Holy... If all this is happening, with their false prophets, there are people that are, there are... I'm not just talking about false prophets who actually preach the word of God. There are people who are now coming uh, 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 online. They no longer hide it, that they are spiritualists and they've got churches that they uh, 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 took their muti from uh, witch doctors. and. Uh, but they are running churches and their church is happening if all this is happening right now what more when the holy spirit is the restrain the word restrain means the one who is uh, stopping something the word restrain means the one who is protecting a uh, certain uh, damage uh, 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 so the damage that is happening right now is not the damage that should be happening once the holy spirit is removed according to the book of thessalonians there's going to be much damage false prophets are going to increase false churches are going to increase false pastors are going to increase now let's look at it deeper verse 8 and then the lawless one will be revealed the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of satan the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. So this to show you that the lawless one that the Bible is talking about is not Satan. The lawless one is a messenger of Satan, which are his prophets. They are the ones that have been sent to make sure that they start uh, churches not according to the laws of God. They are the ones that have been sent to make sure that they start, uh, they start preaching not according to the laws of God. They are the ones that have been sent to make sure that they, they, they uh, 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 grow churches apostolically not according to the, what? To the laws of God. Now, listen to this. The coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan. So as the work of Satan increases, as the restrainer is being removed, more false prophets are going to increase. So right now we are complaining about false prophets. We have not seen anything. They are going to increase. Signs, uh, uh, the working of Satan, with all power, signs and lying wonders. So they are going to come being used by Satan. They will have power. They are going to have what? Power. They are going to have signs and lying wonders. So they are going to do miracles. They are going to heal the sick. They are going to do deliverance. Jesus was asked by his disciples uh, concerning the, the coming of, uh, of false prophets. And Jesus told them that they are going to come and uh, 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 command mountains to move. They are going to command fire from heaven. And uh, Jesus gave us a scripture where he told us, and he said, uh, and you and uh, uh, you come to me and you said, but we, we healed in your name. We are uh, delivered in your name. We uh, healed the sick in your name. We prophesied in your name. But Jesus will say, get away from me, you evil generation. I uh, don't know you. Go from, from, from where you belong or from where you're coming from. So it means when someone opens up their mouth, listen to this. Jesus is saying, when you were saying in the name of Jesus, be healed, and people were healed, you, you were not using my name. Isn't this crazy? Jesus is saying, when you were saying, uh, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you were not prophesying in my name. So the mentioning of Jesus no matter how sweet it is to our ears, the healings that are happening in our eyes, no matter how sweet they are to our eyes, are not enough evidence that the person who is doing that is a man of God. I'm going to look into what Jesus really meant when he said, when you come to me and you say it, but we healed in your name, I'm going to say it, depart from me. We are going to do that another service. Today, I want to dwell on this so that uh, we don't mix a lot of things. But I just want you to meditate what I'm saying, that Jesus is going to tell the pastors, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, the workers of this gospel that are calling themselves men and women of God, they are going to be told that depart from me when you were saying be healed in the name of Jesus and people were healed. Because they are going to come and say, but we healed in your name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, by men of God who don't belong to Jesus. 
So this is not a matter to pray to, to, to play with. This is a matter that I want to challenge men of God to make sure we bring our churches to a position where uh, uh, people are, are, are delivered by the truth. People should know this truth so that people are careful. People of God, there is heaven eternally and there is hell eternally. One day you are going to die and your soul is going to go to heaven eternally or to hell eternally. This is the right time to make sure that you make the right decision to know Christ deeply without looking for miracles, without looking for signs or for wonders, all that which is important, like I'm saying, all that which is important, all that which is a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ, but which is not the primary thing about the gospel. The primary thing about the gospel is the word. Jesus said to his disciples, go ye preach the gospel. Go ye preach the gospel. Go ye preach. So we should preach the gospel. Now, um, verse 10, and with all uh, so let me take from verse 9 so that we are on the same page. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, with signs, and lying wonders. Wonders. At times, you know, when we read the word, they are going to come with lying wonders. So it means people that will be looking will say, ah, but they are lying wonders. So I don't understand why, uh, 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 you know, uh, the world is in a panic, because, like I said in the Bible, is there. The world is in panic because our preachers are not doing their work to prepare the church, which is the wife of Jesus Christ, concerning the dispensation that we have entered. People are only concentrating on the Gospels that people want to hear, but not uh, pointing as well to other Gospels, which are Gospel truths. Verse 10, And they are also going to come with all unrighteous deceptions among those who perish. I want you to take note of this. They are going to come with righteous deceptions that are powerful, that are that that are, are beautiful to see where people are going to look at the wonders and say ah which are big signs but these things are going to be done as deception among those who perish so this is no longer focusing on the men of god who is just doing it. it's also now focusing on the congregations that are listening i don't know if you are getting this it's now it it has now changed let me put this in shona not that you don't understand english but it's but all this are going to be lying wonders and deceptions. But deceptions are going to be lying wonders and deceptions. But deceptions are going to be The reason why they are gathered together is because you are going to find out why they are in that place. Because now your question could be, why is God not having a mercy on them? Uh, I will show you what the scripture is saying. So it's now focusing on the people that are the, the recipients of these fake miracles. They are perishing according to scripture. The recipients of these lying wonders are perishing according to scripture. The recipients of these false prophecies are perishing according to scripture. So you owe it to yourself. To know a true man of God. You owe it to yourself to know a true church. You can't just follow multitudes. You can't just follow a few people just because you like where they are going or you like what they told you. You, This is a personal journey. Know the Holy Spirit. When you desire to know the Holy Spirit, He will reveal the truth to you. Let me tell you something. All these men of God in churches that you are seeing that are doing uh, uh, fake things and uh, fake miracles and uh, fake this and fake that, I almost went there at one point. I almost went there, but you know what stopped me? A pure heart. Because I told myself if I go there, I want to go and see God. So when I was about to, 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 to leave my home and go there, the Holy Spirit came to me because of a pure heart, my pure intention to go there. Not miracles, not signs or wonders, but desire to want to know God more. The Holy Spirit came to me and he said, have you prayed? I entered into my prayer room, I prayed, and uh, uh, I started getting revelations of uh, lies that would be happening there and the Lord said in Jesus and I'm going to reveal these things to you and here we are things are being revealed so the people that are there ended up there because of the conditions of their hearts had they been seeking God genuinely they would God would not uh, 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 have let them end up in places like that and be deceived the other time there's a prophet of uh, uh, there's a, 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 a man of God I used to listen to that man of God um, on his television channel and I said wow uh, this man of God is very, very powerful. And uh, he now was coming to South Africa and I said, Lord, I'm going to enter into prayer and uh, I need you to guide me because I'm going to meet him uh, personally. 
So this is now very important uh, and different from when I was watching him from television. I want to know whether this is a true man of God. And God said, uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you. He didn't give me an answer immediately when I prayed, but God said, I'll show you. You're going to see what is going to happen as you go there. So I took uh, some of my uh, leaders in church and we traveled and we went uh, where this man of God was having a service. Oh my word. We got there, there was a, 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 a queue. And when we were outside and there was a queue, uh, we started, uh, it, it, it just started getting unusually hot. It was exhausting, it was uh, 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 tiring, and a discouragement just started kicking in our hearts. And I said, ah, is this God speaking? And uh, I said, ah, maybe, you know, uh, this is me uh, being too sensitive. I need to be resistant. It's hot, I know, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. Let me be resistant. The queue moved as we were getting closer. As we were getting by the door, we were told the church is full. Ah, I said, is this a second sign that God is showing me that maybe I'm not supposed to be in here? So I, I spoke to my sister and I said to my sister, oh, oh, what should we do? And my sister said, ah, you know what, uh, this is very um, uh, discouraging. I don't know what God is saying about this, but let's wait, let's see. So they said, uh, we are going to prepare the overflow for you. So we waited outside. Uh, uh, they took time to prepare the overflow. The church started. We started getting agitated because we could hear that the church, uh, the man of God is preaching in Then We are getting excited. We want to get in. And uh, it was frustrating. Now they said, ah, we can't fix the overflow. Now we are going to put uh, speakers for you outside. They connected speakers and they put the speakers outside. As we were about to sit to listen to the, to the word, they said the uh, amplifier for the, that was connecting the speakers that was going outside just blew. Ah! And I say to myself, no, I think this is what God told me that I'm going to show you. I'm not supposed to be here. But what we did is we said, uh, let's um, uh, uh, get uh, buy anointing oil. He was selling uh, anointing oil uh, 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 and a, a ridiculous price, about uh, $2,500. Um, because I, I, I respect this man and because I love him, I said, let me overcome my, my, my reasoning. Let me just buy the oil. At that price, I did not agree with that principle uh, of uh, selling oil because the Bible says anointing was freely given and freely shall you give. And this is a 2,500 and we bought a small bottle of oil like this. And uh, we, as we were just going home and we, we, uh, we got home, the, the bottle fell and it broke and we lost the oil. So uh, to me, these were signs that God uh, uh, showed me and made manifest in my life to separate me from connecting to the wrong anointing. And I can tell you many, many examples of uh, men of God that I also used to doubt. And I pray that I go there and I had so many uh, beautiful services in there. And the Lord blessed me. I remember the other time I went to uh, see Prophet Corbus. Um, uh, I think it was months before he went to be with the Lord. What a beautiful service it was. What a beautiful service. But there were a lot of critics uh, of Prophet Corbus. Uh, they would criticize him for that uh, pool of Bethesda. We had an opportunity to uh, walk in that pool. So. I'm just trying to give you all these examples so that you don't uh, think I'm saying all this because I don't understand or uh, the prophetic movement or I don't know prophets. I've got friends who are true prophets of God. I've my, like I said, my fathers are true prophets of the Lord. I am, I'm, I'm under the best anointing according to my opinion. Uh, the best anointing uh, uh, here on earth is pure. I love it and I've seen wonders. But in, with desire to want to know other men of God, I have also visited certain men of God. And I've... I've, I've same things. So I'm not just saying this uh, as a man sitting down just to say stuff. I've, I've, I've gone to uh, so many men of God. I've uh, seen things there that have made me to come to this point where I say I'm going to sit down, teach you so that you don't get lost. The grace that was upon my life when I didn't get lost and I went to those first men of God might not be the grace that is upon your life. You will get lost. So now, here is a message that is saying the preacher who is preaching false things and the listener who is listening to false things are both perishing. Why is the preacher perishing? Because of his intentions. Why is the, the, the receiver of the message perishing? Are they not innocent? They are not. It's because of the intentions of their heart. They ended in the wrong place because of the intentions of, the heart, of their heart. Verse 10. I'm going to take it again. And with all unrighteous deceptions among those who perish. Among those. So these miracles are happening among people that are perishing. These miracles are happening among uh, the congregation that is perishing because they did not receive love of the truth. They did not receive love of the truth. So the truth, like I said, is not um, a mere assumption that uh, uh, someone can just say, 
why are you not working in love based on their opinion? If we put people's opinion there, 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 Christianity will stop. There are people who will tell you that uh, because uh, you you uh, 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 don't eat this kind of food, you are not working in love. There are people that tell you that because you don't accept this kind of people, you are not working in love. There are people who tell you that because you condemn uh, this kind of behavior, uh, why are you calling it sin? So we are going to get to a point where the gospel will not be preached. We are going to get, mark my words, we are going to get to a point where the gospel will not be preached. And it's happening because of the men and women of God, not who are fake, who are true, but who refuse to love by preaching the truth. Here is the scripture. They did not receive love of the truth. So love, true love, is in the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. You only begin to walk in love when you are walking in the word of God. Not when you do what you think is right. You only begin to walk in love when you begin to uh, 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 hear the truth. Not when you hear what you want to hear. So let's walk in love by preaching the word of God. Of, of God by opening scripture. I'm opening scripture to you. I'm not preaching munyaism here. I'm preaching to you scripture that those who are the congregants of fake men of God are also perishing as their men of God are perishing. Why? Because they did not receive love of the truth. So it means, if the Bible is saying they did not receive love of the truth, it means at one point they had an opportunity where they had the truth, but they did not fall in love with the truth that was preached to them. So God gave them away to the devil through the hands of false men of God and false uh, women of God. And here we are. So they did not receive love of the truth that they may be saved. So here is evidence. They, at one point, they received a true message. They probably were in a certain church, but they did not receive uh, the, the message with, uh, of, uh, with love, the message of the truth with love. And they ended up in the hands of wrong men of God. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Oh my God. I want you, I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. God will send them for this reason. Because they, they received a message of truth. Because they received a message of truth. And they did not love a message of truth. They ended up running for miracles, for signs and wonders. They ended up being under fake prophets, fake pastors, fake teachers. Now, God is saying because of this reason, what reason? That they did not have love for the truth. God sent them strong delusion. Not the devil. God. God. Take note of this, not the devil. God sent them strong delusion. We have sent a strong, not a weak delusion, a strong delusion. You are not going to convince them that they are men of God is not a man of God. You are not going to convince them that they are men of God is using muti. You are not going to convince them that this miracle is fake. That everyone who has got a, a, a normal eyes and a, a no more ears who can judge normally is seeing even if you take a child who is in grade five grade seven who tell you that this is fake why would they stand with those kind of men of god woman of god because god sent to them not the devil a strong delusion that they should believe a lie god sent them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie god not the devil so we have got people that are believing false men of god not by the hand of the devil but by the hand of god it's God who sent a strong delusion. We are going to look deeper into this um, verse, this strong delusion, and uh, really put it there so that people can understand. But I hope so far, Janduk Dora Zukubatika, Marachi Titranyasha. Verse 12 That they may all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So God sent them a strong delusion that they may believe a lie, that they may all be condemned. That they may all be condemned. Saka, so if you go and tell them that you are, 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 you are, you are being condemned, you are not judging them. You are telling them the word. It's scriptural. You are quoting what the word is saying. That they may all be condemned who do not believe the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, uh, this is what the Bible is saying according to this scripture. As I as I conclude, and like I said, I, I said to you today, I'm going to focus on. Uh, uh, one, two, three things. And number one, uh, we, we focused on the, the, the need for you to have ability to have a, a gift of discerning spirits so that when you get into a church where there is delusion, where there are lies, you will know 
through the gift of descending spirits that you have. Number two, we pointed out, we pointed out the, 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 the period that we are in, that we are already in the period of false men of God. We are already in the period where people are being lied to, but they are believing lies. Number three, I told you from the beginning that I am going to reveal to you systems that they use, systems that they use to make sure they what? They attract numbers. Systems that they use to make sure that they make people believe that things that are happening in their churches are of God and are true when they are, are things that are staged when they are miracles that are lies. There is a system that is called uh, a system of helping God. There is a, a, a friend of mine, a, a, a prophet, who used to submit to a certain prophet and uh, he uh, gave me a bit of revelation concerning this. I had already gotten revelation when I was in prayer and when I spoke to him about it, he gave me uh, a bit of revelation about this. There is a system that false uh, men of God use, which is called a system of helping God. They say they will do whatever they can to help God. And by whatever they can, they don't mean evangelism or sticking to the gospel or, 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 or being persecuted and dying for Christ. By everything they, they, they mean, they can even do fake things in church, fake prophecies, fake lies in the name of helping God. Because they say God needs help. God needs help. And which is true. God needs help. I, I always say God has no legs but my legs. So I have to walk and do evangelism. God has no hands but my hands. So I have to lay hands on the sick on behalf of God. God has no eyes but my eyes. So I have to look around and see where there's a problem and uh, help in the name of Jesus. God has no mouth but, but, but my mouth. So I have to preach on behalf of God. So it's true that God needs help. But no, he does not need help in the sense of lies. Because in God there's no lie. The Bible says, let every man be a liar but God be true. Because in God there is no lie. His foundation is built with righteousness, holiness, perfection, power, authority, to mention by just a few. So they use a system that they call, we are helping God. When they say we are helping God, they say, even if we prophesy and the prophecy is staged, as long as people are seeing on television and jumping and shouting, and it goes viral that there's a true prophet there, as long as numbers increase, they are increasing, coming to church, so we are helping God. So. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter they are doing a fake resurrections. It doesn't matter they are doing a fake miracles as if they are walking in air. It doesn't matter they are doing fake miracles as if they are uh, uh, healing people from wheelchairs. It doesn't matter they are doing miracles as if... I saw this other uh, miracle of a man of God uh, here in Africa who uh, uh, would uh, take potassium permanganate. I want you to listen to this very well. He would take potassium permanganate and when he takes potassium permanganate, when you you put potassium permanganate in water, it turns into uh, uh, if if I'm not mistaken, please uh, uh, I'll correct it on my next service. But it's potassium permanganate or potassium something. I don't really remember. I'm not very scientifically good, but uh, it's potassium something. Um, uh, maybe permanganate. I think where if you put it in water, it turns into red. So this man of God, you take a towel that he looks like he's using to wipe his face. And on that towel, his usher would put the towel with potassium permanganate on the pulpit. So he says to, to people, uh, come and uh, kneel down. And um, unfortunately, it's women that get deceived uh, a lot. So you find a lot of women on the pulpit. And this man will say, I want to pray everyone for everyone who has got HIV, that they get healed uh, from HIV. But a miracle is going to happen. You're going to see blood coming out of uh, people's hands. So he would lay his hands into the towel that has got this potassium. And when this potassium uh, is touched, you can't see it with your eyes because it uh, gels with, uh, with the skin. Um, so it go and lay hands on people. People don't know that he's actually putting this potassium on their foreheads. Now, when he takes a bottle of water and he says, be free, and he's anointing people with water. Anointing people with water, which is biblical. I'm not against it. Uh -uh. It's a teaching for another day. But he would then use a right system of God, but for deception. That's what they do. They take the right system of God, but they twist it and uh, look as if they are using it for God, but for the devil. So when he lays hands using potassium, he takes water, sprays water. The moment the water gets in touch with the potassium, it turns into a uh, blood-like liquid. And people would uh, faint in shock how blood is coming out of their forehead. And this is a trick, a scientific trick. I'm not talking about things that are not happening. Uh, if the Lord permits, I'll give you the name of that man so that you go and Google it. Or maybe if you can just, so that I don't say names, just Google potassium permanganate miracle. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a pastor here in Africa. 
and see what happens. So people see uh, blood, uh, which is not blood, uh, flowing out of their hands. And the people collapse, saying, I'm here with men of God. I felt sorry for another woman crying, men of God, I used to doubt you, but now I believe you're a man of God. I've never seen anything like this, blood coming out of uh, someone like this. And the man of God says, you have not seen anything. I'm actually coming to wash some of you, your legs, because there's still more blood. So he takes more of the potassium permanganate. The usher comes with the towel as if he's giving the man of God to uh, wipe um, his hands after he washes uh, he touches water or, or, or they sweat in the hands. Yet he's touching the potters and permanganate. So the man of God knows what's happening. His ushers know, what, know what, what's happening. These are the institutions that we have today that are out there. And you can't tell me that we have to keep quiet in the name of walking in love. Walking in love is telling people the truth, that people are getting deceived. And they have to be careful because at the end of this life, there is a heaven and a hell to go to. I told you, I showed you according to scripture. Those that are following the man of God and their man of God, who is fake, they are both going to hell. That's what the scripture said. So, he takes potters and pomegranate, he says to uh, bring a dish, uh, he takes many dishes. So these uh, women put their legs into, into small dishes with water. Then he touches uh, the, the legs of the woman, washing the legs of the woman, as if taking HIV out. The water turns into blood. And uh, women scream, and the, and the ushers hold the microphone, ah, oh, man of God, another miracle here. The blood is even coming out of their feet. Oh my God, this is happening. And this was exposed by people who used to go to those churches. And like I said, there's a video. I'm not talking about something that does not happen. There's a video on YouTube. Google it and uh, you'll see it. Then the interesting part, the ushers now, they'll take Vaseline and put Vaseline in their fingers and they take needles. Now if you take a small needle and you put where you applied a lot of Vaseline, it sticks. And they also take potassium and permanganate. So the, the men of God would say, uh, ushers help me to pray. I can't wash hands of every person. Because there will be thousands, more than 4,000 women that have to be prayed for that are for HIV. And uh, these people begin to pray. And as they are praying, they are dropping needles into the dish. And uh, the usher would rise up and say, man of God, it's going to another level. It's no longer blood only coming out, even needles are coming, are coming out. This man has got haulage trucks that he uses to transport chairs. This man has got haulage trucks that he uses to carry his chairs and instruments. Haulage trucks, he's rich. This man has got a um, uh, 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 blend of houses, nothing against that when the Lord blesses you, of course. But I'm saying all these things are quiet, out of deception. So, um, this is happening. This is happening. False prophets are now there. False pastors are now there. False teachers are now there. Uh, be careful. And also be careful uh, because... Uh, uh, oh, the Bible says how can two walk together unless if they agree. Be careful that the moment you begin to criticize me and you say I am condemning uh, uh, other people and say they are false men of God. If they are false, if you are against me, it means you are for them. And the Bible says how can two walk together unless if they agree. So your reward and their reward is the same. So I want to warn you uh, so that your soul will be saved. Be careful which church you go to. Prophetic ministries are now very dangerous. And let me say it again, my church is a prophetic ministry, but prophetic ministries are now very dangerous. Uh, deliverance ministries are now very dangerous. And let me tell you this, my church is a deliverance ministry. Uh, and uh, let me tell you this, uh, churches with miracle signs and wonders are now very dangerous. Why? Uh, because this is what the men of God are only concentrating on, not the word. So um, uh, know the Holy Spirit personally. This is my conclusion to you. Know the Holy Spirit on a personal level. Go and grow this spirit of discernment. That probably was your next question. How then do I, uh, so not the spirit of discernment, the spirit of discerning spirits. How then do I grow the spirit of discerning spirits, men of God? More prayer, more worship. As you are praying, play worship in your prayer room. Study the word of God a lot, especially the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, uh, Acts, uh, you go to Romans, First uh, Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Galatians, First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Colossians, as you go down. The New Testament is more important because it gives you identity. The Bible says the Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. If I stand up and my shadow is there, it means my shadow is a shadow. I'm the original. So the original is the New Testament and the shadow is the Old Testament. So you cannot be acquainted deep enough with the Old Testament as, unless you've got knowledge of the New Testament. So I want to encourage you, be acquainted with the New Testament so that you know God more. As you grow in the New Testament, you then begin to visit the uh, Old Testament. As the Lord leads, I'm going to give you uh, study guides so that you study the Word of God. But here is what I want you to do. Study the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These books talk about Jesus' ministry. But on them, concentrate especially on the book of John. Uh, 
uh, if you have got any questions as you are studying, ask me. Then uh, the book of Acts will let you know the Holy Spirit when he came. How was he moving with other people so that he also moves with you? The book of Romans, Corinthians going forward, now shows you the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. Do that for your growth. Do that for your safety. Do that so that you don't get deceived in the name of Jesus. We have come to the end of this episode. May God bless everyone who is watching. May God uh, give you a spirit of wisdom so that you don't get deceived. May God awaken your heart so that when you are being led to a false man of God, a false woman of God, a false church, something in your spirit will communicate with you that you are about to get lost. I know you are watching this because you have got a desire to want to know God more. May the Lord resurrect that desire. May the Lord resurrect that desire. May the Lord give you a heart that fears God. May the Lord give you a heart that fears God. May the Lord give you a heart that follows the Holy Spirit. May the Lord give you a heart that obeys the word of God and does it. May the Lord give you a heart that obeys the word of God and you do it. You do it. The Bible says don't be deceived by listening to the word only. You have to do it. Be a doer of the word of God. Be a doer of the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord bless every viewer. In Jesus' name, I speak increase into your health, increase and blessings into your marriage, increase and blessings into your business, into your career. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Amen.